If a truss is in equilibrium, then each of its joints is in equilibrium. That's why, the total force that acts on X or Y direction must be zero. If not, then the joint posse's acceleration, joint having acceleration, is impossible to imagine. In equilibrium each joint of truss are either in compression or tension. A force pulling on a joint is caused by tension, in a member, and a force pushing on a joint is caused by compression. A member in compression pushes, on the joint, and a member in tension, pulls on the joint. Remember this free body, diagram of compression and tension state. You shall need this for analysis of trusses, using the method of joints. For analyzing a truss, using the method of joints, always choose a joint having at most two unknowns, and at least one known force. For example, consider the pin at joint A of the truss. Three forces act on the pin namely, the 10 kN force, and the forces, exerted by members AB, and member AD. We don't know whether these two members are either in compression or tension. The forces are unknown. Always assume the unknown member forces, acting on the joint's free body diagram, to be in tension, that is, the forces pull on the pin. If this is done, then numerical solution of the equilibrium equations will yield positive scalars for members in tension and negative scalars for members in compression. After drawing free body diagram of pin A, imagine this pin as origin of Cartesian coordinate system. The forces vector acts on these coordinate plane. Arrange these forces according to their direction and identify the angle it makes with X and Y axis. Resolve them into their X and Y components and then apply the two force equilibrium equations. Solve for the two unknown member forces and verify their correct sense. Member AD is negative, so it is in compression. Whereas, member AB is in tension state. Since you have already determined the force exerted by member AD, only two unknown forces, are now involved at this joint D. Again, assume unknown forces in tension, and solve the forces, imagine joint as origin. Again at joint B, arbitrarily assume, that both unknown forces act away from the joint, the positive value obtained for member BC indicates that this assumption is correct, member BC is in tension. The negative value of member B indicates that the second assumption is wrong, member BE is in compression. Take a quick look at this truss. Right now, the only unknown force is member CE. You can isolate joint E or joint C to determine the unknown force. Let's isolate joint E. Draw the known forces vector with their known magnitude and direction. We again assume the unknown forces in tension. There is also unknown reaction force caused by a roller support. Don't forget about it. Let's assume it acts downward. That is, away from the joint. Now solve these forces vectors. Member CE will be in compression. If you notice, we have calculated all the member forces without calculating support reactions first. It is so because, we start from joint A, and there are only two unknowns. But, if you start from joint C, then you need to calculate the reaction forces first. Verify their correct sense and move on, using the method of joints. <laughs>